after nearly a month in space, the James Webb Space Telescope ends its deployment work. The complicated series of deployments has seen the telescope transform from its tightly folded launch configuration to what looks like a real observatory, although science observations remain months away. But for now, Webb arrived at its new home, L2. Congratulations to the team that have been working tirelessly since launch to get to this point. Now, it's time for us to expect shocking discoveries from this $10 billion machine. So, what will Webb be pointed at? Why and when? Let's find out the answer in today's episode of Great SpaceX. L2, or Lagrange Point 2, is the final destination, but it's also the starting point of James Webb's new journey. After Webb achieved its final orbit around L2, which was around 33 days after launch, NASA will turn on and operate the Fine Guidance Sensor, then the NIR Cam and NIR Spec. The first NIR Cam image will be of a crowded star field to make sure that light gets through the telescope into the instruments. Since the primary mirror segments will not be yet aligned, the picture will still be out of focus. At 44 days after launch, they will begin the process of adjusting the primary mirror segments, first identifying each mirror segment with its image of a star in the camera. Besides that, they will also focus on the secondary mirror. From 60 to 90 days after launch, they will align the primary mirror segments so that they can work together as a single optical surface. Then, they will also turn on and operate the MIRI. By the end of the third month, Webb will complete its journey to its L2 orbit position and be able to take the first science quality images. However, as Jane Rigby, Webb Operations Project Scientist, warned everyone not to expect much from the first light of Webb. Because the first images are going to be ugly. It's going to be blurry. And why is that? Because testing Webb's beryllium mirror made up of 18 hexagonal gold-covered segments is going to be a complicated and slow process. The primary mirror segments will at first be off by millimeters, which is a large degree of imprecision when it comes to honing in on a distant exoplanet or seeing the stars in a faraway galaxy. According to Lee Feinberg, Optical Telescope Element Manager for the James Webb Space Telescope at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, when we take what we call the first light of the telescope, we are expecting to see 18 separate spots that are probably going to be pretty blurry because everything's going to be misaligned. It'll be like having 18 separate telescopes. So the first thing engineers will have to do is align Webb's individual primary mirror segments and then to take those 18 images and stack them on top of each other. Stacking an integration technique used in astrophotography of all kinds reduces the unwanted noise within images. Engineers will then use a series of algorithms created very early in Webb's development program to complete the alignment. As Feinberg said, this will be the first time that we do it on the flight telescope with real stars, so we're all excited. It's a little bit of a long process, but at the end of it, we expect to see an image of a star that looks like a star. That'll be a critical point, but it won't be very interesting to most people. So, when will Webb take its crisp first images? NASA estimates that it could take up to 120 days after launch for Webb's mirror alignment work to be complete. Given that Webb launched on December 25th, 2021, that's going to be April 24th of this year. So Webb will likely be pointing at stars and seeing its first light six weeks before that around mid-March. However, NASA says not to expect the first showpiece photos from Webb until about five months after launch once commissioning ends and that's about May 24th of 2022. So whether we'll see any of Webb's first test images of stars is doubtful. It's more likely that NASA will publicly release a set of beautiful first light photos all in one go during May or June of 2022. At that time, we can dream bigger dreams. For example, Earth 2.0. One of the greatest barriers to find habitable worlds elsewhere in the cosmos is that we have only one example of such a world ever in existence, Earth itself. Yet, beyond our solar system's seven planets, we now know that there are thousands if not millions of other star systems with their own myriad planets, some of which may be quite similar to Earth. 
In the last three decades, scientists have discovered some 4,000 known exoplanets. A handful of these orbs are known to exist in the Goldilocks zone, a special area of space both close and far enough from their host stars to have surface temperatures able to sustain liquid water, like Earth. Further, some exoplanets show faint signs of carrying water in their atmospheres, another key sign of habitability. But these worlds are so far away. That's why spotting them is a painstaking task. But now, scientists have an opportunity, the James Webb Space Telescope. According to Nicole Cologne, the James Webb Space Telescope Deputy Project Scientist for Exoplanet Science at NASA, Webb will observe about 70 different exoplanets in the first year of science alone. These 70 planets have all been discovered by other observatories, but the web will transform astrophysicists' ability to decipher their true nature, and even image them directly. The web could also discover new exoplanets itself as well. In the first year of science, Webb will observe at least four or five small planets in the habitable zone. NASA thinks that these planets are in the Goldilocks zone, potentially Goldilocks planets. And if there is an atmosphere that is reasonably like Earth, Webb will have the sensitivity to start to detect this water vapor and so forth. So one should be able to start detecting these methane and carbon dioxide molecules. Webb really provides the first opportunity to find potentially habitable worlds. But obviously, it's hard. Really hard. Like, it's just literally a really hard measurement to make because these atmospheres are so thin. And the signals we're looking for are so small, and Webb is going to reveal a lot of information, but NASA itself is more confident about some of this potential habitability. But then, actually finding signs of life? That's a whole other thing. Despite that, the agency has deemed that these are still some of the most viable targets to continue to pursue. Thus, some of these future missions are already in the works. Those projects are designed more for that sensitivity, like specific to biosignatures that we should expect to see on a modern day Earth. Because basically, we need a lot of telescopes at different wavelengths to get all the information we need. Speaking of information, that's all the information we have for you today. So if you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to tell us what you thought about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.